Good morning, and welcome to St. Luke's Lutheran Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. And good morning to those who are also online with us this morning. And for those of you online, if you wish, we encourage you to download the bulletin so you can follow along with the service. And you can do that by going into the website stlukesbloomington.org. That's stlukesbloomington.org. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And for those that are here, if you wish to sing along, we'd love to have you sing with us. And uh, please stand as you are able. And we will start with Majestic. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. For all of you who are gathered, take a moment to welcome everyone with a wave of peace. If you're joining us online, please share a comment or chat. Most of all, 
As we go out into the world, may we greet each other as people of peace. Hey, and welcome to St. Luke's Lutheran Church here in Bloomington, Minnesota. So glad that you are gathered in worship, whether it is online or in person. Um, wonderful to have you here. If you are online, I invite you to go to our website, stlukesbloomington.org, and you can download the bulletin and fully participate in our worship. We have a few announcements. Um, first and foremost, thank you for all the prayers. Um, our Boundary Waters trip was a wonderful experience. There's a couple in the crowd today from uh, part of the baptism that were on our Boundary Waters trips in the past uh, when they were youth and I was a whole lot younger. Um, this coming week is Vacation Bible School, the best, uh, week, best week of the summer, and we will be, right after announcements, inviting uh, them to come up who are helping lead and uh, we will commission them and bless them. We have campfire worship every Wednesday through July 27th. Uh, it's at Atonement Lutheran Church, which is Portland and uh, Old Shakopee Road. It's in behind the church, and it will be um, a light meal at 6 o'clock, and worship starts at 6.30. Uh, campfire worship, there are chairs, there's picnic tables. Come and enjoy. Um, Today we will be celebrating part of our 100th anniversary with Pastor Mark Shaneholtz sharing the message. And uh, he apologizes, he'll share that in the video, that his daughters uh, came down with COVID and so he's unable to be here in person, but was happy to uh, share the message with us today. And last but not least, we have a baptism today for uh, Daxton Hartung. And um, we will celebrate his new life in Christ over the waters of baptism. With that said, I invite uh, the Vacation Bible School members up and along with the microphone. That would be great. Emily, would you like to share what we look forward to in the week ahead? Yes. We are so excited for VBS. Well, I'm very excited because it's my favorite week of summer, and we are doing a Knights of North Castle theme, so we're going to have a castle, we have a dragon, and I'm just so excited to meet so many new friends, and we're just going to have so much fun. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> and who are you? And I'm Emily, and I'm the Director of Children and Family Ministries, so I help out with our Children's Church, I help out with Wednesday Night Live, um, v VBS, Trunk and Treat, lots of fun things. Uh, and helping, le well, leading Vacation Bible School. And if you want to pass the note, say who you are and what you're going to be doing as part of Vacation Bible School. I'm Jody Murphy, I'm going to be doing art. I'm Barb Roberts, I'm going to be doing stories. I'm not Eli Norris Weber, but he will be doing games, my son, um, along with Luke Griffith. And um, my wife will be helping with cleanup. And do we still need help for that? I don't think so, then. Be We're, yeah. many, hand, many hands make light work. So we'll take you if, if you're available. I'm Nancy Erickson, and I'm doing science. I'm Mark Roberts, but during BBS, I transform into Hank Tun, surfer dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Michelle Sundet, and I'm new to VBS, so I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fun. <laughs> and I am rock star, also a knight of the castle. D daytime, I'm Paul Klein. <laughs> and I'm Julie Klein, and I'm going to be doing snacks. Nice. And there are a number of other people that will be helping out um, with Pat Lair doing music and a number of our students uh, participating as well. Um, I gave my son the chance to sleep in today after being in the Boundary Waters for the past few weeks. But you, who are gathered here, you have heard God's call to teach and lead Vacation Bible School for St. Luke's. Will you trust 
in God's support, sustaining grace and empowerment for this task. Rely on prayer and the presence of the Holy Spirit, inviting others to recognize and respond to God's call in their lives, knowing St. Luke's members hold you in prayer, love, and support. If so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes with the help of God. And I invite you, the congregation, will you hold these leaders and the students in your prayer, love, and support? If so, answer we will. We will. Let us pray. Loving God, you have entrusted us with the message of your power, grace, justice, and love. We ask for your guidance, that we may be teachers and learners together, believing that you are in our midst. We set apart those who will serve in our Vacation Bible School. May they serve you in nurturing the spiritual growth of all who are entrusted in their care. Bless each one gathered here, enabling them to be channels of your grace. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may return to your seats, and now I invite up uh, Jenny and Jeff with their son Daxton for baptism. And Jeff and Phil were, uh, I think, about fourth, fifth grade when I first met you over at uh, Bethlehem, where I served as the youth director and youth pastor. And they went on all of our mission trips together. And it is a privilege and a pleasure. Uh, we had little Xander baptized here uh, a few years back, and now to baptize Daxton. And let us begin. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to a new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the world. Who presents this child for baptism? Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and the love of God, you desire to have Daxton baptized. In doing so, you are entrusted with these responsibilities, to nurture Daxton in the Christian faith, worship as a family and bring him to the Lord's table. As he grows in years, place in his hands the, whole, the Holy Bible. And here at St. Luke's, we give out five Bibles for as they grow in years. You want to hold that for your brother? You can take a look at it. And I believe you have a different one at home. We since switched. But, but as he grows in years, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures. Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, and be faithful examples so he will learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for God's creation, including all people. If you promise all of this to God, please respond, we will with the help of God. Do you reject sin, the devil, and all of his empty promises? If so, respond, we do with the help of God. We do with the help of God. And you, the congregation, I invite you to stand. Will you pray for Daxton and all children, supporting him and all children in his, in his journey of faith? If so, respond, we will. We will. Let us join in confessing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your word and water that come together in the sacrament to wash and give life.
pour out your Holy Spirit, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life in Christ. Amen. And Daxton, you're going to have to lose that derby. All right. Hi, bud. Do you want to play in the water? This is what? Oh, here. What's this? You want to feel some of it? All right, so this is what we're going to do. I warned your parents of this. Jeff, remember your baptism, that you are a child of God, accepted, forgiven, and loved in Jesus' name. And Jenny, you are a child of God, accepted, forgiven, and loved in Jesus' name. Are you ready? You want to touch the water? Oh, yeah. Daxton, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Oh, the congregation may be seated. <laughs> Daxton, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nicely done. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up in a new life through the gift of baptism. Pour your Holy Spirit upon Daxton, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Daxton, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Good job. We light the baptismal candle to remember Jesus is the light of the world. Light this candle each year on your baptismal anniversary to remember you belong to Christ. Daxton, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And Daxton is doing what we should all be doing, walking wet each and every day, remembering our baptism at all times. And so let us welcome Daxton together in reading together what's on the screen. We welcome Daxton into the body of Christ. Amen. There. Great job. You're welcome. And you guys can welcome your newest brother in the faith. And I'd like to invite all of our children up for our children's time. Come on up, friends. You guys can come sit next to me on this blue ledge. How is everybody today? So what are your names? Sander. Marilla. Levi. Lily and Grace. Well, guess what starts tomorrow? You might already know. Lily, do you know? Vacation Bible School. Yeah, Vacation Bible School. Who's excited? Me. I'm so excited, too. So today I brought with a little puppet friend, and he's gonna, he kind of relates to our theme. So what do you think our theme might be for VBS this year? <laughs> it's Knights of North Castle, so we're going to learn about dragons and castles and knights, and we're also going to learn how to armor up with God. The Bible talks about how we can armor up in a spiritual way with God, so what is something that we could use if we were a knight to protect our hearts? Do nothing. Nothing? <laughs> what? Here, I'll, maybe I'll show you what it looks like. Anybody know what this is called? A robot. A robot. 
close, kind of. This is a chest plate. So this would protect my, my heart and my, all my bones right here when I was a knight. But the Bible talks about the, um, the breastplate of righteousness, which means... I know. Have you heard about that? Oh, cool. That means we live lives that are good and true, and we can believe things that are from the Bible. And another thing a knight might use is a shield to protect themselves. So they would be a lot bigger than this, but this is something they could hold up to protect their bodies. And the Bible talks about the shield of faith, which means that um, God is always there for you, and he will protect you and keep you strong. Isn't that cool, you guys? So I'll let you guys take one sticker, and you can pass the bag down, and these are to remind you that God is always with you and that he will keep you strong and safe. Perfect. And so those are stickers, so you can put them on your shirt or you can just keep them like that. And they all say different things. So yours says, armor up with salvation, armor up with justice. What does yours say? What does yours say? Armor up with peace. Armor up with peace. Armor up with faith. Armor up with faith. Peace. Cool. So those are just a good reminder for you guys. And then we will end in a prayer, and then we'll go to Children's Church. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for protecting us and keeping us strong and help us armor up with you so we can be just like you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today's reading is Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand or stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on the evil day and having done not everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt around your waist and put on a breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith with you, which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert, always persevere in supplication for all the saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Luke's. <laughs> what a, a blessing it is to be able to address you today, uh, not in the way that I hoped to do so, to be actually physically present uh, back in the sanctuary uh, with you, uh, with people that I know and love, a sanctuary they love, a church that I, that I love and continue to love. Um, it was just such a joy to be with you for those 11 years and to be invited by Pastor Rob to participate in this 100th year celebration of the ministry of St. Luke's in Bloomington, Minnesota. And uh, this is not how I intended to join you today. Uh, the pandemic got in the way of that. Imagine that. All of us have been living with what I call the great disruption for two and a half years. And we have learned to do life in new ways, to invest in relationships and to value relationships intentionally and to be intentional in the way that we communicate as I'm doing this morning. Uh, but here's the good news. My wife and family, we plan to be with you next week. And so we'll come and see all of you. And uh, thank you for understanding that with all three of our daughters coming down with COVID this past week, um, it just was not the right week uh, to travel and to bring potentially bring that to family. And th these were not light versions of this virus, which was totally surprising to Emily and I. Uh, so here we are, 
uh, two and a half years later, still adjusting to the great disruption. But isn't it great that God has provided so many ways for us as his people to continue to be faithful to the gospel? I know that you have adjusted wonderfully uh, doing ministry and doing worship in ways that make use of technology uh, to still reach uh, the people that we want to reach for Jesus Christ and for the uh, the powerful gospel that we're going to be talking about today. And so let me read for you uh, from Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off of your feet as a testimony against them. So they will set out, so, so they set out and went from village to village proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Would you pray with me? Lord, we seek to be that very people today who go out and to heal people everywhere. And Lord, we know that it is your word that has the power to do that. We are not by nature healers. We don't have that gift in ourselves. And yet your word provides all of that power and all of that authority. And, and as we reflect on this today, especially Ephesians chapter 6, Lord, uh, that speaks about uh, the armor of God and the authority that we walk in in the name of Jesus as, as your people. I pray that you would give us a new boldness, O oh God, to confront the realities of our time with the good news of the kingdom of God. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I understand that you are starting VBS tomorrow and that um, some of the scriptures that we're using today are part of that uh, VBS theme. And uh, I want to ref reflect today on Ephesians, and I want to do just a, a very quick overview of this letter uh, so that we can kind of bring ourselves up to speed before we head into Ephesians chapter 6. But if you understand this letter, the way this, this unfolds, it is just a grand vision for the way that, that Paul understands God's plan to impact this world with the power of the good news of Jesus Christ, his cross his resurrection, and the power available to those who believe. And so a quick overview here. In Ephesians, we find the plan of salvation uh, just given in such wonderful terms, this, this, this eternal plan that God has to bring all of creation into relationship with him. Secondly, we understand in this letter that we're part of of a new humanity that God is actually creating in Jesus Christ. There's the initial creation. There is now a new creation that is coming that one day that Jesus will initiate uh, for our experience completely and fully a new heaven and a new earth. But the church today, God's people today, we are the beginning of that new creation. It is actually birthed inside of us. It is planted inside of us. And so we are part of a new humanity. People from all over the world, who call upon uh, the name of the Lord and receive uh, the gift of his salvation and uh, power to be called the children of God. So we are part of a unified human race, a new unified human race uh, in Jesus Christ from every tribe, nation, uh, and tongue. And uh, then, of course, in this letter, we learn that we're called to be God's men and women that give glory to him in creation. We are part of a, a redeeming work, God's redeeming work in the world. And then before we move into chapter 6, Paul spends time talking about the Christian home and how the Christian home needs to be a reflection of the kingdom of God. Before we can go out into the world wearing the spiritual armor that we'll talk about today, before we can make a true impact in the world, we have to make sure that our homes are reflective of kingdom values that represent the nature and the character of Jesus Christ, his grace, his love, and his power for us who believe. 
And so our relationships at home need to be brought into relationship with God and need to reflect uh, who it is that we say we are. Before we can move in authority and authenticity into ministry in the world. And so this grand vision now comes full circle then uh, to an important reality that this vision that God has for the newing of creation has opposition. And that opposition is both from the world and also in the spirit. There is earthly opposition and there is spiritual opposition. And both represent real power that can frustrate and so we have to be realistic about that. We, we can't expect to move into the world as, as the sons and daughters of God, as the children of God, and not face opposition, and not face confusion, and misunderstanding from others, especially in our world of such incredible confusion today about what is true and what is not true, what is a, a lie and what is not a lie. Our whole culture is just caught up in this whole question right now. But that rebellion against God's goodness and God's plan preceded us. We know from this passage that it includes a heavenly and spiritual war that really is for every human soul today. And so we have this mandate for us as the church to be involved in a battle today for the kingdom of God. And we're going to talk about how that battle works. There's a lot at stake. So Paul is telling us that by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, we become part of this spiritual battle in a new way. No longer are we victims or just victims or collateral damage of, of uh, um, the enemies, the devil's rebellion against the goodness of God. We are now equipped to join Jesus in his mission to the world. And this battle plays out daily in our own emotional lives. This battle is internal as much as it is external, but it also is the reactions of others or the situations that we are part of on a daily basis, the atmosphere of rooms that we enter at work and at school, uh, the departments and teams that we are part of uh, in our careers. Paul points out that this is an unseen world, but it impacts the everyday world that we live in. But because it is unseen, and this is such an important part, because it is unseen, it can be overlooked and misunderstood. And this is why we need God's word to bring clarity so that we are clear and directed by the Spirit of God in the way we are to live and move and have our being, as the Bible speaks. Every spiritual battle is manifest in earthly conflict in some way. And every man and woman and child is affected by this battle, by the way, on a daily basis. Without Christ, a person is simply captive territory to the enemy. Think about C.S. Lewis. He did such a, a wonderful job of, of speaking about this very thing, especially the, the hiddenness and the unseen nature, the confusing nature of the spiritual world. He said in Screwtape Letters, if you've read that in fact, that one of the greatest deceptions that Satan, that the enemy, has brought into this world is that there is not a battle, that there is not a spiritual world, that personal evil just doesn't exist. And so in this letter, Paul discloses to the Ephesian church that we must claim our authority in Christ and wear the spiritual armor every day as members of Christ's spiritual army that is slowly taking possession of enemy territory, freeing captives and bringing the gentle and good reign of Jesus Christ. That's what this is about, by the way. No one goes into battle without armor, and Christians, as spiritual warriors, need to put that armor on. Now, this idea of earth as a spiritual battle has a lot of Old Testament support, doesn't it? Primarily, we see this in the stories of God engaging with Israel in the conquest, the retaking of the promised land. And this is often confusing for young Christians and mature Christians 
alike. Why do we see God engaging in spiritual or in, in actually physical warfare on the side of the Israelites against the inhabitants of Canaan? How is this consistent with the loving God and the peaceful God that we find in Jesus Christ? Well, the only explanation that has ever made sense to me is that war on earth, conflicts on earth, are sometimes an extension of war and battles in the spiritual realm. There are some conflicts on earth that we see easily fall into that category, and, and maybe World War II is an example of that, the, the effort to, to rid the world of the Nazi influence that had taken over, over Germ Germany, this out-of-control nationalism that, that riled up the German people and made them, themselves see everyone else as an enemy and a threat and led to such incredible evil, unspeakable evil. It's very easy for us today to look back and to see uh, with clear eyes that this was also a spiritual battle that was taking place. Another example of this might be the, the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. And we, we see just the the, just the, the frustration over how this could still happen. And, and here we are, you know, in, in a new century. And once again, a new century is beginning with nationalism and expansionism and conflict, not only abroad, but here at home. We've all seen just the, uh, the dangers of that play out. But most wars, let's, let's be clear about this. Most wars are simply a result of human greed and are not part of God's plan, Okay. But in the case of the conquest of Canaan, it seems that we understand that it was initiated by God as a part of his story of salvation, to retake that, that land that had been given to Abraham, a place for the people of Israel, the, his, his chosen people to be, for the Messiah to be born, for the story of salvation to take place. And it was also a judgment that was coming on the, on the, the nations in Canaan that were involved in not only in, in, in uh, idol worship, but demonic worship with uh, some very violent aspects to that. And so God was actually using the, uh, the people of Israel to bring judgment upon, uh, upon Canaan. So today we understand then that God jealously guards his plan and brings to completion the things that he wants to bring to completion. But let's also be clear, in the Old Testament we see that God did not always fight on the side of Israel. In fact, when Israel disobeyed him, God used the other nations of the world to judge Israel. And so this is not about God picking favorites in terms of which side he wants to win wars. God has a plan, and he will bring that plan to fruition. And so moving into the personal level here as we come to Ephesians 6. Paul makes clear that as a follower of Jesus Christ, you will face spiritual battles. Every earthly battle, earthly battles, in fact, that relate to the kingdom of God are usually fought on the individual front <laughs> in our own lives, internally and externally, as we said. And uh, verse 13 of chapter 6 really sums this up. Put on the full armor of God, it says. Put on the full armor of God. I want you just to flash back for a moment into the Old Testament and just picture David, picture King David. Little, King, little David, who had been called out of his, his dad's fields with the, the, the sheep because the, um, the armies of, of Israel were afraid to fight the Philistines. There was giant Goliath and all of their fears were riled up. And here was David who came with that, that childlike trust and faith. And Saul, King Saul says, well, you got to put on my armor. <laughs> you got to put on my earthly armor. Picture this little kid trying on the heavy armor of a man. And then David quickly, quickly rejected it, didn't he? And he chose instead the spiritual armor. And it was with spiritual armor. Remember, he came before Goliath and he said, you come before me with a spear and, and, and uh, items of war. I come before you in the, in, in the name of God. And, uh, and that was enough to say that David had put on his spiritual armor. So what is this armor? Let's look through it. The buckle of truth around your waist. Uh, the enemy's weapons are based in lies 
and the twisting of the truth. And so when we hold on to God's truth, we are taking a defensive stance. And in fact, it's so interesting, the buckle or the belt of a Roman warrior held all the other components of his armor together. It was all buckled together into the belt. And so it really begins with truth. Truth comes from God's word. That's where we go to. We, we do not dispute with the word of God. God's word is truth. So a little reminder here. Before you put on your earthly belt in the morning to hold up your pants, how about we spend some time with God's word and we put on our spiritual buckle of truth first? And don't let it sag. That's not cool in the kingdom of God, by the way. <laughs> the breastplate of righteousness. Let's look at this image. It covers our vital organs, of course. A warrior in those times would wear a breastplate to cover uh, their vital organs. Um, it also carried the symbol of whatever army or battalion uh, a, a warrior would be, would be part of, right? And so in the case of, of you and, and me, it's the cross that we would find upon our chest, that we are marked with the symbol of Jesus Christ, aren't we? And so putting on the breastplate of righteousness, we're understanding too, this is good uh, Reformation theology, that is not our righteousness that we stand in. If we were to do that, it would be a, <laughs> a breastplate made of paper. It wouldn't do any good at all against the flaming arrows of the evil one, as Paul said here. Instead, we are putting on the righteousness of Christ, which is an imparted righteousness by faith. We place our faith in Jesus Christ, and there is his righteousness that is imparted to us. That is what protects our vital organs, our heart. The sandals of readiness, this is the last piece of armor, that, or worn armor, that uh, a warrior would put on. It, it meant that they were ready to go. This is the armored sandal, in fact, that uh, a um, centurion would put on. And, and the point here is that you are ready. This is the sandals of readiness, it says. You are going into the world understanding that there is going to be a struggle. There is going to be a battle. The Christian life is not easy. It's not easy at school. It's not easy at work. It's not easy in our families sometimes. And we want to make sure that our feet are fitted with the sandals of readiness, but also, as it says, the gospel of peace. We are meant to walk in the reality of the gospel of peace. So this is not a violent image at all of us putting on spiritual armor. We are walking in peace. And in fact, the Old Testament said, how lovely are the feet of those who bring good news, right? This is exactly a, a premonition of what this spiritual army of Jesus Christ would look like, that we are to walk as people of peace. The shield of faith. A shield is a defensive weapon, of course. It's, it's carried again, and, and often it demonstrates the symbol of the army that you belong to or the, the person that you are following. Um, and it is meant to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And let's think about this for a second. This reminds us that, that spiritual attacks, though they come from inside, often they, they come from the outside too, from the words of others or the actions of others, or just the realities of society around us, the things that we face, and, and they, can, they can stick in us, and they can burn. That is the, the image here of a, of a flaming or a burning arrow. And it is by faith that these arrows are, are shielded from us, and we are defended, and the fire is put out. I want to tell you a story. Actually, I think I told this story way back uh, to you uh, many, many years ago when I was serving at St. Luke's. And, and I just want to emphasize again, I have such good memories of, of ministry at St. Luke's and just what, what a formative time this was in my life. And you all, um, those of you who were, who were with me, and, and, and part of um, the church, you know, 10, 10 15 years ago, um, we were all uh, in this mission together, and you had such an impact on me. And, and as I said in, in a note that I sent to you, uh, during some challenging and difficult times in my life, when I faced some questions and, 
and difficulties in relationships. You were there. You, you stood and encouraged me. Uh, some of you did that by asking questions, and some of you did that by not asking questions and, and simply praying. And so um, I always think about St. Luke's the healer, and uh, there was a, a period of time where you ministered to me as a congregation. And uh, I will for all, always be indebted uh, to that. And uh, we are meant to shield one another. That's a really important thing here as well. Um, we are meant to stand with and for one another uh, when we go through uh, difficult times in life. So um, I want to just remind you of a situation that I shared with you a number of years ago that is one of these spiritual battles. When I, when I was in seminary, I was in my second year, I believe, um, I woke up one night. This is a, an example of how the spiritual attacks come from the outward so often. And I woke up about 2 o'clock in the morning, and, and there was in my dorm room a spirit of fear. And it wasn't inside of me. It wasn't like waking up from a nightmare where you feel you know, scared or something like that. I, 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 this fear was external. And I remember sitting up in bed and realizing there's, this, this, there's a, a presence of fear in my dorm room. And I had been prepared for this as a, as a pastor in training, and I just said, you know, sleepily, uh, fear, in the name of Jesus, you must leave this room. And as soon as I did that, it was like a light had gone on, and it was gone. It was just gone. And I just lay down and went back to sleep. And if you know how nightmares work, if it was simply a nightmare, you would just not go simply right back to sleep, okay? Anyway, so I woke up the next morning. The story is not over and uh, remembered what had happened, went down to breakfast, and uh, a good friend of mine named Pete came to the table, and the first thing he said was, guys, you wouldn't believe what happened last night. About 2.30 in the morning, I woke up, and there was a presence of fear in my dorm room, and I'm losing it here as I'm hearing this. And, and he said, I told that old demon, I said, in the name of Jesus, you get out of here, and, and, and it left. <laughs> and I kind of recovered myself and said to Pete, hey, I'm sorry, man, at 2 o'clock it was in my room and I forgot to tell, tell it to leave the building. <laughs> it's not a joke, really. I mean, these things are real. But what's important about this story is the authority that we have. And this was the shield of faith in action, wasn't it? The name of Jesus emblazoned on that shield. Uh, was that presence responding to my authority? No, it was not. It was, it was responding to the authority of Jesus Christ. And so... These are spiritual battles. And, and kids, as you're listening, I don't want you to be afraid of this stuff. Okay, this is really important that, that we have the power of God at our disposal through the name of Jesus who loves us and who knows us and will never let anything happen to us that we cannot handle with him. And so I want you kids to remember too that if you ever feel that way, that something is just not right, call it by name and use the name of Jesus. And I can guarantee you that that authority has power. That's the shield of faith. <laughs> Let's move on to the last two pieces of armor. This is the helmet of salvation and the sword of the word. Both of them, you recognize, have to do with the word of God. Our helmet of salvation comes to us as the gospel. This comes from the word of God. And if you imagine just that, um, putting that helmet over top of your head, this is what protects our mind, isn't it? The breastplate protects our heart, but it is the helmet of salvation that protects our mind. We start to think differently when we realize that we have been saved through Jesus Christ and we have our, our allegiance to him. We, we think differently. We speak differently as a result of that, as representatives of him. It's the word of God in action in our lives. And then, of course, it is the, the sword of the word and how important it is for us to, to be familiar with the sword of the word. You can't just pick up a sword and use it for the first time. You have to, you have to know it. And so it's so important to read God's word and to memorize it, to have portions of it memorized so that as situations come up, come up in life, you know how to handle that with words that you can speak. You can speak into situations as a... And remind friends and people that you come across of the promises of God. Um, when I was younger, I was a, a fencer. I did um, competitive sword fighting, actually. And we went over and over the parries that we would need to do to move the blade of the opponent and to be able to bring things to a point, right? 
And that's what this is all about. This is the sword of the word. We had to practice to do that. In fact, I wouldn't even think, and my hand would do what was necessary and, and bring that to a point. I was never very good, by the way. I, I came in the, in, in the bottom half of every tournament that I was in. So don't think I'm telling you that I'm a great sword fighter or anything like that. But this is exactly how the word of God works. We have to practice with it. We have to have it at our disposal so that when the time comes, that word is ready and available at our side, not only to help others, but to help us as we face the challenges of life. This is the armor of God, friends. This is what what we are given by grace to wear. And it is a conscious thing. In the morning, go through it. Pray through those things. Helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the buckle of truth, the sandals of readiness with the gospel of peace. I take up the, the shield of faith and the sword of the word, and I'm ready to go into the world as a representative of the kingdom of God to make a difference to those around me, to those around us. That's what we're called to do. God, I just pray for St. Luke's. I just thank you for this wonderful congregation for a hundred years, Lord. You have used this body of believers, generation after generation of St. Luke's members. And and here we have a whole new generation of St. Luke's members who are equipped with your word. I thank you for the ministry of, of, of Pastor Rob, just such a wonderful, wonderful person to lead this congregation into greater kingdom impact. And I just pray, Lord, that that you would put a special blessing and protection over this congregation for the new century to come. And uh, Lord, may many come to know you because of the ministry of St. Luke's. And may many be healed because of the ministry of St. Luke's. And I pray this in Jesus' name and by his authority. Amen.
my Savior, my Savior lives. Every day a brand new chance to say, Jesus, you are the only way, my Savior, my Savior lives. Now let us join together with the prayers of the church. With confidence in God's compassion and generosity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Faithful God, we pray for the church. Lead it always to proclaim its faith in you, who gives us the words of eternal life. Give your church the gifts of truth and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our fragile and beautiful planet. Renew our sense of wonder and our determination to care for your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the world. Equip them to serve with justice and to dispel the forces of evil. Inspire the citizens of every country to love wisdom and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the brokenhearted and those whose spirits are crushed. Wrap them in the warm embrace of all-encompassing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly as it prepares for Vacation Bible School. Bless those during this intergenerational learning opportunity as they grow closer to God and one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have gone before us. Give us wisdom to follow their example of faithful living and to stay true to the path of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now we join together using the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. In this time of reflection and response, you're invited to take a yellow card, fill it out. You can share any reflections, questions, or prayers on the back. We especially invite you to offer words of, or thoughts to Pastor Mark. Those will be passed on to him from the congregation. Also at this time, you can prepare your offering. For those gathered here in the sanctuary, there are plates located at the exits. If you're online, we invite you to go to the website, stlukesbloomington.org, and there's a link at the bottom of every page. Enjoy this time.
us grace and brought us safe thus far and grace will lead us home the Lord has promised good to me his word Thank you, Jubilee, for leading us in worship. And you know the best way to thank the musicians is to sing along as we um, join them in our sending song, Following the Benediction. What a day we've had. Uh, Vacation Bible School is coming up. Please keep the students and the leaders in your prayers. The baptism of Daxton. Um, and for us to remember our own baptism as well each and every day. And that is part of our spiritual armor as uh, we are clothed to go out into this world uh, with uh, peace and love and joy. May you stand and receive that benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing along. future is in your hands. Caught in the light, with all the earth we will see. You are the author of love. Our freedom is in your name. Embracing the cross meant for us and brought us
I now invite you to put on the whole armor of God and go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks. Be to God. God, our hope and our salvation, worthy of all the praise, be our light everlasting. Great is your 